Today on Hearts of Heroes, a family dog goes missing for five heart-wrenching days. Bernie sees the chance and literally rams the door, and in seconds, she's gone. But when she's discovered, she's trapped behind a cement wall, and rescuers have few options to get her out alive. We weren't really sure what we were walking into. Plus, a four-alarm fire leaves firefighters battling a roaring blaze and Mother Nature herself. We were dealing with 55-mile-an-hour wind gusts. The ladder was bouncing up and down in excess of 10 feet bounces. There's no job more vital than somebody dedicated to saving lives. lost a pet? Many of us have, and we know that feeling. It can trigger fear and panic. But these emotions were only amplified when one family finally found their lost dog, but it was trapped behind a concrete wall with no escape. Unable to reach their precious pet, the family turned to their local fire department. But after five days of being trapped, would rescuers reach her in time? Gertie sees the chance and literally rams the door and in seconds, she's gone. She didn't come back. Five days without water, a dog would be so dehydrated, they could die. I remember that call coming in, saying that there was a dog stuck behind a wall. We knew that none of us were gonna fit down there. In the southwest corner of Ohio sits Cincinnati, the third largest city in the state. People who live here are proud of their city and the role that it's played in the history of heroes. And this is on full display at the Cincinnati Fire Museum, which is dedicated to the city's unmatched historical role in firefighting and life-saving. In 1802, lawmakers required all males between 16 and 50 years old to respond to any and all fire calls. And in 1853, Cincinnati became the first fire department in the country to pay their firefighters. It's safe to say that saving lives is in this city's DNA. Third grade, I won a coloring contest, and the prize was to get pictures on a fire truck. And I stood on it, and ever since that day, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And after achieving her dream, Jennifer Atkins learned not every day on the job would include fighting fires. My name is Connie Frick, and I live here in Northside in Cincinnati, Ohio. We have had Gertie for about nine years, and she was almost a year old when we got her. She had been a street dog before the rescue got her. She's a very sweet dog, just loves to run away. And it was this wandering spirit that would lead to days of panic and worry for her owners, Lynn and Connie. It was just a regular day. Lynn had gone to the store, and as she's coming in the door with groceries in hand, Gertie sees the chance and literally rams the door but she hits it so hard, and Lynn didn't have a free hand to grab her, and in seconds, she's gone. This wasn't the first time that Gertie had run away, but she had always returned. It's thundering, and she's terrified of storms, so, ah, she'll come back. She didn't come back. Urban areas are very dangerous for a dog that's loose because of traffic. They get hit by cars quite frequently. Other animals can attack them. I was sitting out here on the front porch waiting for her and whistling for her, thinking she's coming back. She didn't come back. That really surprised me. She left on a Tuesday, and we started putting up signs Wednesday afternoon. If your dog runs away or gets lost, always put up missing dog posters with a clear photo and contact info. At least three or four people had said, well, you know, Connie, after like two or three days, there's a really good chance she's not making it back. It was getting hotter every day. We were in the woods looking for her, calling for her, whistling for her. I was definitely worried. I was getting really concerned because the temperature just kept going up and up, and there had not been any rain since Tuesday. 
Five days without water, a dog would be so dehydrated that they could die. As the search escalated, an unusual call came in to the Cincinnati Fire Department. We're sitting in the station and the call comes in and everybody looked at each other like, okay, wait, this says that there's a dog trapped in a wall. We weren't really sure what we were walking into. Coming up, they found Gertie, but she's trapped and her health unknown. Rescuers are in a race against time. We knew that none of us were gonna fit down there. And later, a raging inferno puts firefighters on the brink. We were gonna die up there if it wasn't for us getting off the roof. But first, a tip for dog lovers everywhere. In the event of pending or potential flooding, there are some precautions you can take to ensure your pet's safety. If you can't take your pet with you, move all your pet's belongings to a safe, dry place and make sure they are wearing the proper identification in case they get separated. You can even keep a toy nearby to help them stay calm. Pets are family too, so let's make sure they're taken care of and have the best chance of making it through a disaster safely. In July of 2021, Gertie, a rambunctious rescue dog, escaped and went missing for five days. On the fifth day, a neighbor of Gertie's owners, Connie and Lynn, heard faint whimpers from behind a cinder block wall in her garage. She immediately called the fire department. The tenant of the home said, you know, I can hear this dog. It's not my dog. She had just moved in recently and she didn't use the garage. On the way to the call, we're pretty much just reading what dispatch sends us. It is a dog between a wall. Reading that it was in a garage between the wall was kind of weird. It's not an everyday call, so we kind of discussed, like, is this behind a drywall wall? Is this inside the house? We didn't have a whole lot of information to go off of, so we were just kind of winging it. We did a 360 around the building. There was no way that the, we could figure out how the dog got in, but we could hear the dog, so we knew that it was there. We could hear this dog scattering back and forth in between the wall. You can hear the dog was kind of whimpering a little. A couple of us went up towards the top and we were able to find a hole and say, hey, this is where the dog is. We can see it now. We pretty much immediately knew that there was no way we were getting her through the top. The wall that she was between was so skinny that we knew that none of us were gonna fit down there. So the quickest, most efficient and easiest way was to go straight through the wall. Andrew and Jennifer had a plan. Cut a hole in the cinder block and hammer their way into the opening. It was time to pull out the big guns. So this is our K-12 saw. We uh, cut these lines right here in the cinder block to make it a little bit easier. So when we hit it on the edges with the sledgehammer, it has a little give to it. So it keeps chipping off every time. I think the biggest safety concern was once we started breaking down the wall to not hit the dog. Because a couple times she wanted to come to where we were when she heard our voices, we could see her back up, come forward, back up, come forward. With the rescue underway, Gertie's owners got a call. The lady identified herself as Vanessa and she said, you know, I'm pretty sure we might have found your dog and I was half dressed. We just flew out of the house as we were. And by the time we get up the street, which is literally less than one minute away, the fire truck was already there. Once we had a big enough hole, I tried to peek in so I could see her. We were trying to just call to Gertie to see if she would come to one of us. She wouldn't come to me. She came to Jen, obviously, because that's the one that I would have gone to as well. I was like, Gertie, come here. And she just kind of waddles right on up. She peeks her head through, and I just grab her and pull her straight through. Nice job. I was just ecstatic. I mean, I was crying. Lynn was crying. The lady from the rented house was crying. <laughs> Everybody was so excited. And all these neighborhood children were around, and they were clapping for the firefight. It was just so cool. The pup was tired, thirsty, and hungry, but she was okay. It was totally surreal. I mean, we got calls from friends in other nations 
living in Peru, living in, in Canada, living in India. I saw you guys on the news. Connie and Gertie recently had the chance to reunite with Jennifer. Come on, Gertie, let's go. Come on, let's go. Gertie! Let's do it. Hi! <laughs> Come here! Hi! Hi, honey! This is the woman who saved you, Gertie! Hi! Hi, honey! Oh, man, are we grateful to you forever and ever and ever. He's so cute. We're so grateful in every sense of the word. I'm just forever indebted to them and admire them. She's my first rescue. <laughs> Your first animal rescue? Yeah, yep. This was a first for me. I had never even got one of the cat in the tree calls. So having this one come in and getting to do what we did was an awesome, awesome experience. One for the books. Coming up, firefighters battle a once in a generation blaze. I knew at that point we had a fire that no one in this area has encountered ever before. First responders dedicate their lives to saving lives. It's often dangerous work. And as you're about to see, rescuers need skill, but the job requires more than that. Quick thinking and fast action can often make the difference between life and death. I was alerted. He said he saw a small fire on top of the roof. We're climbing up a ladder. It's windy conditions, icy. The fire actually started to come around us on our left and right side. At that point, get off the roof. Get everybody off the roof. That's when my heart sank and I knew we had a fire that no one in this area has encountered ever before. West Hazleton, Pennsylvania, a small borough with about 4,500 residents. In the 19th and 20th centuries, it was a coal mining community, attracting thousands of immigrants coming from all over Europe to work the mines. It's a coal region, um, a lot of older homes, a lot of older people. We still have those small, tight-knit communities um, where everybody knows their neighbor. And one of the staples of this community is the Wise Market. Wise is a family-owned company. Um, it started about 1912, so a very family-based retail store. In December of 2021, a particularly brutal winter's day almost destroyed this market. We deal with a lot of freezing temperatures, high wind conditions, snow squalls. Conditions could deteriorate very rapidly when it comes to winter weather. I remember talking to everybody about the expected weather forecast and the high winds, and I made the comment that, God forbid there was an incident going on this evening, it wasn't gonna be the best outcome. That evening, manager Dylan Poncari was working the night shift at the market. I was dealing with some weather-related issues. Um, it was just very windy, you know, picking things up outside the garbage cans or flipping over. I was standing right here when a utility worker walked in. Uh, he said there was a small fire on the roof, and I immediately made my way to the back of the store where I met him. This is where I met him. I opened the receiving dock door, and smoke started filling in. And the second I did see that smoke, I had the store immediately evacuated. When I pulled in with the engine, I was talking with the commanding officer, and he was informing me that there was a possible fire up on the roof. So now we're getting ready to go up our ladder truck to investigate what was going on on the roof. We were dealing with 55 mile an hour wind gusts. The ladder was bouncing up and down in excess of 10 feet bounces. The ladder was terrifying, it really was. Uh, every step you took, the ladder would shift one way to the next. When we get up onto the roof, it seems like it's not a huge deal with the amount of fire we had up there. I noticed the fire was burning in the HVAC unit, and I thought we were gonna go over there, hit it with the fire extinguisher, put it out, and be done for the night. But suddenly, we heard a explosion happen behind us. And we noticed that the fire has greatly enlarged. And we had some embers coming our way, and the wind was highly intensifying it. That's when my heart sank, and I knew at that point we had a fire that no one in this area has encountered ever before. 
Coming up, firefighters' lives hang in the balance. And at that point, get everybody off the roof. Get off the roof. Come on. But first, another safety tip. Each year, the brave men and women in our fire departments put their lives on the line to help when we need them most. On average, over 50,000 firefighters are injured on the job every year. While it comes with the territory, there's some things you can do to help keep us safe in the event of a fire. This includes listening to our instructions and staying clear of the scene. If you are ever in this situation, get out, stay out, and make room for these courageous first responders to take care of the rest. In December 2021, West Hazleton, Pennsylvania firefighters responded to a blaze on the roof of a supermarket. They had to brave 55 mile per hour winds while battling that blaze, an inferno that was fueled by embers and a broken gas line. I've never been in a fire situation like that with, with the intensity of the winds, the size of the building, the amount of fire we had. I knew at that point this was gonna be a major incident that we were gonna need multiple outside agencies to come in and assist us, and we had a battle on our hands. I called for a fire hose to bring up to the roof. I had the fire hose, and as I was moving forward with the hose line, I ran out of hose. As I was standing my ground, the wind and the intensity of fire was just blowing the water back at me. We could see the fire, but the water wasn't hitting it. We were getting bombarded with smoke, pieces of roofing. It was just the losing battle. The fire's increasing in size. It's being fed by the wind. It's coming at us in all different ways that we weren't expecting. You can feel the heat from over 30 feet away. You can feel the fire in the wind. At that point, it's like, get off the roof. Get everybody off the roof. At that point, we were going to die up there if it wasn't for us getting off the roof. There's no building worth the life of a firefighter or anyone else for that matter. Anytime there's a disaster like this, the first thought, and most important, is that of safety. How can we do this in the safest possible way? Come on, come on. Come on. As firefighters made their way to the ground, additional units arrived with what are called aerial master streams. We can use aerial devices to elevate the water stream so that we can shoot it down into the seat of the fire to effectively put it out so that our personnel aren't directly attacking the fire with the hose line and putting their lives on the line. More than three hours later, firefighters finally gained the upper hand. We knew we had control of the situation when the fire started darkening down, and you couldn't see it really whipping above the roof line. They saved the structure of the supermarket, but the fire and water damage was immense. And before the flames were even extinguished, our sponsor, Belfour, was on the scene to begin the restoration process. When I first entered the store, there was about three to four inches of water a lot of the water was heavily contaminated with soot and some of the byproducts from the roof being on fire. So we need to make sure that we got it out the right way. We were able to get all the water out, food sources out, any leftover food out within two weeks. The biggest challenge for this project was getting the store back open. This is the closest grocery store within a 30 mile radius. So a lot of the people depend on this particular store for their grocery shopping weekly. Six months later, they reached their goal, and Wise Market celebrated their grand reopening. I could not wait for us to reopen. Um, it, it's home. We built a strong family and a good team here in West Hazleton, and everyone was just so excited to get back open. And it's all thanks to the hard work and heroism of everyone involved. We were super happy to be able to help them get back up and running, and certainly is a great partnership. Considering all the challenge we were faced with that night, they did a great job, and it was made possible through the effort of every single first responder that we were able to accomplish what we did that night.
The world always needs dedicated first responders. So if you are now inspired to pursue these honorable professions, go online or to your local library and explore your options. Or better yet, visit your local police and fire departments to speak to these brave men and women in person. Maybe someday you'll be a hero just like them. And until then, thanks so much for watching Hearts of Heroes. We'll see you next time.